Hi, my name is Kristen, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in the state of California. I've given several videos on toxic relationships and what healthy relationships look like. I've received several email and inquiries and comments basically saying, okay, look, I've identified that my relationship is unhealthy, it's toxic, it's not working, how, how do I get out of it? Um, so the f I'm going to do a series of several videos kind of talking about various options and things you can explore under that umbrella. Is Okay, I know my relationship's bad, now what? So today I'm going to be talking about the subject of discerning. Should I stay? Should I go? What now? There's so much hurt. Can we recover from it? And I found a really great book that's very helpful for this phase is a book by a pretty famous author, John Gottman. Um, he writes it, What Makes Love Last, How to Build Trust and Avoid Betrayal. He's pretty famous for selling a bestseller called Seven Principles of What Makes Marriage Work. He does a lot of years and years and years of observing marriages and what he calls the love lab up in Northern California and then follows the marriages through several years and finds what what marriages last, what marriages fall apart, kind of collects the data about what commonalities do they have for good relationships and what things lead to divorce. It's a great book when you are in a rut, um, you are very cynical about your desire to stay in your relationship maybe because you've been harmed or victimized by your partner, or um, you were the one who did the harming and victimizing. Um, and you're trying to figure out, should I just make a clean break of this one and go start somewhere new? Um, this is a great book to kind of read while you're in that thought process. Um, he gives a couple reality checks that I appreciate and gives you some basic concrete skills when you're trying to assess, okay, my relationship sucks. Um, helps you understand why it sucks in the various ways, your harm that you might have caused your partner, and how your partner might have harmed you, and where to go from here, how to engage in those really uncomfortable conversations, how to heal, how to talk about these kind of things, and what does love even mean to you? What do you want it to be? What are your goals with a partner? So let's, let's dive into a couple elements that I think are worth highlighting. And obviously, if you want to get into more detail about the subject matter, welcome. you're welcome to pick up the book. And I also, link below, I have a recommended reading list, and you, you'll find it there, along with lots of other helpful books. He starts by explaining that a relationship can't exist without this concept called trust. Uh, he gives you even a trust matrix to assess, you know, where you and your partner are on your ability to trust each other. Because the concept is, is that you can't be in an intimate relationship. You, you can't share parts of yourself, your good, your bad, your light, your dark, without seeing some kind of, kind of evidence or proof from another person that they're worthy of holding that, those pieces of you. That they're not the type of person that's, you know, will take something that you're embarrassed by or that you're sensitive about and use it to exploit you or harm you. So there has to be uh, some minimal level of trust in order to be in any kind of intimate relationship, friendship, family engagement, etc. And it just simply won't work otherwise. Um, it'll be a pretty superficial relationship without that element of trust. So he explains that betrayal is often at the foundation of every relationship that's failing. If a husband works too many hours instead of putting his time and focus on his kids and family, there is an experience of feeling betrayed because there is an expectation that your partner will want to spend time with you and give, you know, parts of his life to you and you feel betrayed when that is not happening. When a wife or partner breaks his or her promises, breaks commitments, similarly, addiction, any kind of addiction, can also 
be experienced as betrayal. So addiction is not just substance use. It can fall under many categories. You can overwork. You can overspend. You can overeat or undereat. These are any behaviors that have created negative damaging consequences and you've tried to stop them at some point and you can't. And most often there is lying, secretiveness, double lives going on. Where Addiction can take on many different forms and I want you to appreciate that and appreciate the fact that betrayal is when there is a general expectation that you and I are being honest and upfront and um, there's clear communication of expectations when suddenly you feel like those have all gone by the wayside and you're not really sure and you're disappointed or feel betrayed because of that. Gottman writes about trust. Mutual trust is what lets people feel safe with each other. It deepens their love and allows friendships and sexual intimacy to blossom. Unhappy partners complain that their relationship lacks all of these elements. A great thing about this book is kind of exploring can you rebuild trust? Where are you at on your trust meter with your partner? And um, here's some steps, some communication that you can dive into. There's another element that he explores, which is called the negative sentiment. I see this a lot in my practice. How negative has your filter become about where you're being hypercritical about your partner, what he or she does, about what marriage is to you, what monogamy means to you. It, I think it's an important aspect when you're assessing the viability of a marriage or a relationship. I have a YouTube on signs that your partner is cheating and I kind of get into the nitty gritty about why they engage in these types of behaviors. But if you're still curious, they also talk about it um, on, in chapter three, which I think is very worthwhile reading. He, he gets it pretty accurate in my opinion. Uh, and he does emphasize the fact that it starts many, many, many steps before two people outside the marriage engage in an extramarital affair. Um, it starts with uh, crossing boundaries, kind of testing boundaries to see who's going to bounce back. Um, it comes with that negative sentiment where you kind of minimize um, your partner's attributes and you catastrophize or maximize where your partner might fall short or where your partner has flaws. Um, again, there's also a cynicism about what's marriage anyway, everybody cheats anyway. Um, and then you use that as entitlement to kind of push boundaries and keep going um, further because you deserve this or there's no hope for the marriage anyway, et cetera. And I think that's a really great thing to explore. So John Gottman also covers ways that you can protect your marriage or improve the quality of your marriage um, in order to prevent infidelity or betrayal from happening. Um, so he's basically asserts that there's that betrayal. So someone falls short of your expectations. Um, that doesn't get repaired. It builds and builds and builds. There's lots of unspoken resentments. There's that negative sentiment where you start viewing the person in the, the marriage or the relationship through a very, very negative filter. And then you start the testing the boundaries. So obviously the idea is, is that you nip it in the bud uh, uh, as soon as possible. And you kind of speak about the unspoken resentments. You speak about how you feel. You, you show your partner your hurt or your wants and your needs. Whereas the tough part about that is, is that if you don't trust them because there's been betrayal, um, you don't want to show parts of yourself. You don't want to courageously say, Hey, I'm really hurt and I have these needs. Or when you did this, that, that was really difficult for me. Um, or I've been harboring all these resentments, or I felt really great when I got attention from the barista at Starbucks and I really wanted to pursue that, um, and I feel bad about that, that takes a lot of courage and a lot of vulnerability to share those kind of thoughts and concepts with someone. And if there's already been betrayal and hurt, and you already view that person through a negative filter, you can see why it gets so helpless and ho hopeless so quickly. John Gottman also lists the ways that maybe someone doesn't have an affair but you can still feel betrayed or um, feel harmed. 
So these are really great indicators if, again, you're not looking at these videos because there's been an affair, but you're questioning the viability of the relationship. One of them is the conditional commitment. It's basically the concept that I'm around until something better comes around. And so you're always putting the vibe out to somebody else just in case. Um, in our sex addiction, love addiction world, we call that rain checking. So you may be in a monogamous relationship, but you always kind of have your parachute packed and you're always putting that vibe out to another person to just see if maybe something better comes along. Your partner has instincts and intuition and either you say that you're not fully committed with your words or you just behave that way and they can kind of pick up that you are too flirtatious or you have one foot out the door all the time. You don't fully engage with your intimate partner. You're not fully vulnerable and you don't allow that person to fully see you. Another way is a non-sexual affair where there's just secrets kept, really, really deep, intimate, emotional conversations that if your partner knew you were talking about these kind of things, he or she would not be comfortable with that. And you just kind of keep it a secret. Um, and you don't, you know, you have this exchange with someone and you say, oh, well, you know, we're not having sex or anything. But the other type of way that you can betray somebody is through lying. Lying is essentially the foundation of betrayal. And, um, but he's just saying straight out, if you are, um, keeping secrets from each other in order to avoid tension. There's pent up resentment that comes from that um, and usually comes out in a passive aggressive kind of way, which destroys trust and creates betrayal. So other ways he lists, and I'm gonna let you just read the book if you wanna know more about these, is if you form a coalition with someone other than your partner, kind of against your partner, that can absent tea or, or cold, withdrawing your sexual interest because obviously there is an expectation well at least usually it is an expectation that if you're in a monogamous sexually intimate relationship that um, there is some interest in contributing to your partner's sexual needs awesome. so it's a very delicate subject and a lot of um, heterosexual couples struggle with that um, and there's sometimes mismatched sexual desire, and I'd strongly encourage you to seek out um, a sex therapist uh, who can help you with that topic. So here's where the work comes in. He basically establishes a foundation to help you understand how trust um, can be broken and how betrayal can be experienced and why those things are so damaging. And then he spends the rest of the book kind of helping you get out of the hole if it's possible. One of the things he talks about is how to become in tune with your partner's needs, with the emotions. So regarding attuning into a partner's emotions, he says, a couple's fundamental problem is an inability to respond to each other's emotions in a way that would deepen their connection rather than drive them further apart. Their mutual lack of empathy, at least in expression, builds up into anger and resentment. Trust cannot exist under this scenario. So after John Gottman establishes the various ways that you can betray your partner and destroy trust and how damaging that is to the relationship, he gets into a guide of how to start repairing that if it's at all possible. Um, he gets into how to engage in conversation. Um, he starts with a couple suggestions of Put your feelings into words. He even adds a little emotion feelings list Oops. to help you say it, it hurts when this happens. It makes me mad when this happens. Um, when you did X, Y, and Z, this is how it made me feel. He then suggests to ask open-ended questions when you're engaging with your partner. Follow up with statements that deepen connection. Respond by saying back what you just heard and in your own words. Reflect back. So he's just giving general healthy communication skills. Express compassion and empathy. If you think your mate's overreacting or should have a different emotional response, just hold back on that urge. 
to offer your opinion or suggestion. This is just open communication and it's very hard. Um, your goal is to let the pe person you love know that you're standing with him or her. Um, so your partner comes in disgruntled from work and you pick up the tension and in your head you might be thinking, oh crap, now he's going to be short-tempered and frustrating to work with. And, you know, there's that negative filter that you have going on about your partner. Um, he's basically encouraging you to remember those four things and just say, um, hey, you seem really frustrated and tense. What's going on? Oh, well, work. I just hate my job. Um, can you tell me more? What's going on? Well, you know, that one coworker I work with, uh, he just threw me under the bus and it's really frustrating and you express empathy. That has to really feel terrible to be in a workplace where you don't trust another person and, um, and you feel like it's an environment where people can throw you under the bus. That must be terrible. Well, yeah, it is. You know, that's just an example of how you can engage in these conversations. That's obviously a less, um, sensitive subject than, um, yeah, I may never trust you again because you slept with your secretary, but nonetheless, it's beginning steps, baby steps. Next section of the book, he talks about how to turn towards each other, because as I've mentioned several times before, if your marriage is wrought with distrust, um, and feelings and experiences of betrayal and hurt, turning into your partner, turning towards your partner is the last place you want to be because all you know is that the person has betrayed and harmed you and he's he or she's going to fall short on the expectations, so why bother? But he encourages you and says, couples who remain married at the six-year follow-up had turned towards each other 86% of the time during their stay at the Love Lab. The couples who also expressed humor and affection and even laughed during their monitored conflict discuss discussions. So some examples of how to turn towards your partner is to pay attention to them, to notice their body language. You, you know, the example I just gave of um, your partner coming home and looking tense, that is you becoming attuned to their cues. And then you practice the empathy to show, hey, I'm here. I don't try to solve it. I can't fix it. But I'm your teammate and I'm here for you and I'm going to help you through this. And I can certainly empathize with you or support you through this process. He then engages into a very detailed breakdown of how to engage in um, some intense, let's say very uh, conflict high resolution communication skills that I think are definitely worth your time and energy. So you can imagine when you're dealing with betrayal and infidelity and hurt and, you know, you have one foot out the door, most things that you're going to talk about are going to be very high escalation, high um, anger, high res emotional reactivity. So uh, he spends several chapters on kind of helping you engage in that kind of communication with your partner. What I love about John Gottman's books, The Seven Principles, and this book, What Love Makes Love Last, is he has all these great anecdotal um, quizzes, which are sometimes, you know, you very, I have to assume you very rarely take them with your partner, but um, they can help you kind of get on the right track of understanding the mindset um, and understanding the viability of your relationship just kind of from the comfort of your own home. Um, so he, he talks about uh, your probability of recovering from infidelity. Oh, sorry, I am really bad at this. Assessing kind of what went wrong to begin with. I love these darn quizzes. Um, I, I give copies of them sometimes to clients. Um, he even breaks down how to choose a good therapist. Um, not all therapists get it right. Sometimes there's a lot of blaming, a lot of shaming. I love that he does cover this and he acknowledges that every mental health professional is not going to be um, a perfect fit for you and your partner's needs. And he gives you some ways to explore, to assess and figure out who's the right fit for you. He also gets into a step-by-step -step breakdown of how to recover from betrayal, but specifically more infidelity. Um, and that talks about confessing, making atonement, 
kind of understanding how it all went wrong and where it all went wrong, kind of breaking down um, the little mini baby steps that led someone to turn away from their partner in their marriage. And sometimes both partners turn away, but just in different ways. And then the ever elusive forgiveness process, which is much easier said than done. Um, and it, it takes time, but nonetheless, that's kind of what has to happen if you're going to get to some kind of level of trust. Um, I will add, I want to add this moment to just talk about trust, this concept of trust. I find that to be a very um, difficult name or word. Um, you know, if you read, watch all my other videos, you'll notice that I repeat over and over and over again that we're all flawed individuals. So with that said, why would I trust another person? If, if another person is always going to fall short, um, why would I put my faith and trust in that person? Um, I believe that there's got to be two things involved with that. One is that you really work on yourself. You work on your shame triggers, on your defensiveness. Um, you figure out who you are, what your values are, what your non-negotiables are. You really improve your instincts, your intuition, your resources, your confidence, so that you're never operating out of fear um, of losing the relationship or who am I or what I am I without this person, um, so that you can kind of also your instincts and intuition are on so that you can be like, hmm, that's weird. You know, why is my partner doing this or why is this happening? And you're kind of noticing um, inconsistencies or things that don't make sense and the confidence uh, and vulnerability kind of be like hmm, I'm not feeling really safe right now um, I'm wondering what's going on here and you can actually talk to your partner in a non-defensive creating way explore ask um, and then the second part is you can give your loved ones your intimate partners the benefit of the doubt but that doesn't mean that you're blindly trusting them, that if they said they were working late because, um, you know, they had a deadline that you were unaware of and that they've never mentioned before and their story seems really inconsistent, um, that still means you have the right to verify and ask questions and say, you know, I'm really confused because this deadline, you've never mentioned it to me before and, you know, you did sexually act out with someone at work. So I kind of need to know that you're not getting into old behaviors or the same thing can apply with all those other addictions or abusive or unhealthy behaviors that I explained at the beginning of the video. In trying to touch upon all facets of relationships, he does some great coverage on connecting uh, sexually, how to kind of rebuild or improve or repair the sexual intimacy. Um, because as you can imagine, that in order to be sexually active with something, someone or want to sexually connect with another person, you want some kind of level of trust. Um, and if you've experienced betrayal, that's going to be a huge issue. Um, so he goes into that, which I think is, is really great. And he also gives quizzes of how to know um, if it's time to go. A lot of the people who email me or comment are in that discernment phase where they don't know, is this stuff repairable? I'd encourage you to maybe check it out. My favorite category that he closes with is something that I think we all struggle with or wonder, especially if we've been betrayed and been hurt in a relationship, which is, what is love? And he has a very long quiz, sorry, about exploring this subject matter. What is love? What does it mean to me? Where do I want to go from here? He quickly summarizes love as enduring love comes when we love most of what we learn about that other person and can tolerate the faults that they can't change. A loving partnership gives us wonderful gifts that make life worth living, a sense of purpose, greater health and wealth, and of course, loving care and nurturance. So all in all, John Gottman's book, What Makes Love Last, I believe is worth your time and energy. Um, it's great for those who've been writing me and wondering, you know, where do I go from here? I'm so hurt. I feel so damaged. I've done so many wrong things. Um, I think it's a, it's a great one to add to your library. And um, if you've read it, I would love it if you put some comments or feedback down 
in my comments page. Um, and I'll be following up with several other topics along the lines of how to kind of repair and recover from unhealthy relationships or hurt or harm in a relationship. If you've enjoyed these videos, I'd encourage you to subscribe. I also have my website linked down below and several other articles re related to this subject matter. Thank you and have a great day.